Hi, I'm Tim from Scoop. Microtech has many useful features and one of our most common requests is how to configure multi-WAN failover. In this video, we show you some simple techniques to achieve this. In this demonstration, we have separate WAN connections on Ethernet 1 and 2, using 10.1.1.1 and 10.2.2.2 as their respective gateway IP addresses. All interfaces have been set with the correct IPs and other relevant configuration to make our router internet ready. So let's move straight into the routing configuration for this demo. Basic gateway IPs can be added to the routing table statically or dynamically in RouterOS. Since our network is very simple, I will use static configurations in our example. To access the main routing table, go to IP, then Routes. Here you will find a list of known networks to your router. Each time you add an IP to your router, it will automatically populate the root list. In my case, you can see all of our networks but there is no internet breakout. To achieve this, a default route needs to be configured using 0.0.0.0/0 as the destination and a valid gateway IP address or interface. You can verify connectivity by opening up a new terminal and simply ping something on the internet. In order to use more gateways, you'll require multiple default routes. RouterOS makes use of routes based on something called route distance. By default, this is set to 1 for statically assigned routes, and generally speaking, the lower distance takes priority. In our example, I'll create another default route, but this time, I'll set the distance to a higher value. You'll see that it immediately displays the new route as inactive. This is because everything is currently using the route with the lowest distance. If we disable route 1, route 2 becomes active instantly with almost no noticeable connection loss. You can confirm the second gateway is in use by simply closing and reopening the route list. RouteOS has a built-in feature to automate failover from one route to another. If we open up our first route, there's an option to check the gateway by pinging the gateway IP address every 10 seconds. If there are two consecutive failures, the gateway is considered to be down. This deactivates the route, thereby enabling the second default gateway. We can test this by creating a firewall rule which blocks ICMP traffic to the gateway IP. After around 20 seconds, we should see our second route come into action. The first route goes into an unreachable state, which makes our second route active. Once 10.1.1.1 is reachable again, it instantly reverts to the route with a lower distance. Although the previous technique works reasonably well, using the gateway IP to check connectivity isn't the best solution. Making use of a public DNS IP is generally more reliable and is less likely to be unavailable. This can be achieved by a lookup process known as recursive routing. Essentially, this is a route that points to another route. So we'll configure the router to use the DNS server address as the gateway instead of the actual gateway IP. To configure this, we'll need to create a route to our public DNS provider. In my case, this will be Cloudflare at 1.1.1.1, and I'll ensure this is reachable via our default gateway IP address of 10.1.1.1. In order for recursion to work, we need to configure the scope and target scope options in the route. The scope value can be anything as long as the target scope is equal to or higher than the scope value. Now we need to change the gateway IP on our default route to 1.1.1.1, then adjust the scope and target scope values. Here our scope can be set the same, but our target scope needs to be one higher than the target scope value set in the first route for the recursion to take place. Since Cloudflare's IP is reachable via 10.1.1.1, our default route now checks 1.1.1.1 before failover occurs. This would typically be more reliable than using the regular gateway IP address provided by the ISP. We could make our configuration even more resilient by using an additional recursive route to another DNS provider. For this, I'll make copies of our existing configuration and I'll change the IP to another address like 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. When we duplicate our default route, we'll need to use a higher distance value. This will make it available for failover in the rare case that Cloudflare goes down. 
If both IPs are down, it's likely there's no internet connection and failover to the second WAN will occur. We can test this by adding firewall rules to verify routes work as intended. Further work can be done to improve on this, like setting up notifications or routing traffic over separate WANs. Since we'd like to keep things short, we might make another video on this. We hope that you found this tutorial useful and look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying the content. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tim from Scoop.